Master, bless me, the proclaimer of the Holy Gospel, according to the Holy Apostle and Evangelist Matthew. God, to the ancestors of the Holy Spirit, and all wonderful Apostles and Evangelists Matthew, grant you their proclaiming great power of speech for the fulfillment of the Gospel of His beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Wisdom, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. To your the reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. The Lord told this parable, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who desired to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun the settlement, one was brought to him and owed him millions and he had no means to pay. His master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all he had so that the payment could be made. But the servant fell down and begged him saying, have patience with me, then I will pay you all. And moved with compassion, the master of the servant released him and forgave him the debt. But as the servant went out, he met one of his fellow servants who owed him very much. And he laid hold of him and throttled him saying, pay what you owe. His fellow servant therefore fell down, beginning to entreat him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. But he would not, but went away and threw him into prison until he would pay what was due. His fellow servant, therefore seeing what had happened, were very much saddened, and they went and informed their master of what had taken place. Then his master called him and said to him, Wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should not you also? have had pity on your fellow servant, even as I have had pity on you. And his master, being angry, handed him over to the torturers until he would pay all that was due to him. So also my heavenly Father will do to you if you do not forgive your brothers from your heart. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Next weekend, I will have the distinct pleasure of traveling back to Illinois. And I could say many comments about Illinois and the state of conditions there at this point in time, but let me just simply say that Fred Thompson and I will immediately escape to central Illinois, where the fields are aplenty and they're going to be full of, of uh, harvest and ready to go and and hopefully god willing plenty of sweet corn so that when i get there um, it's ready for the boiling and the eating because it is that time of the year where the fields literally are just chock full of uh, corn and soybeans which you know i'll leave soybeans for those that like tofu that's not my bag but uh We'll go there and we'll experience harvest time and have some time with our family. And so you say, what does this have to do with the homily this morning? Well, let me preface my comments regarding the gospel uh, this morning by way of saying that the scripture is very clear. It says, St. Paul wrote, he says, be not deceived, God will not be mocked. What a man sows, so shall he reap. God won't be mocked. The, the result of what you sow is you're going to reap a harvest. And the, uh, the scriptures in the Old Testament says, He who sows to the wind shall reap the whirlwind, whirlwind which means it's always bigger than what you anticipated. It's always uh, more, shall we say, violent in some respects even, um, devastating. And so what we have in the gospel this morning is a picture of a man who was given grace. He was forgiven an insurmountable debt. And one would think that as a result of being forgiven in such a great quantity of, of indebtedness, that he would turn around and have a, a spirit of, of 
giving forth that which he has received. But we're told that's not what he happened. What happened? Rather, he went and grabbed a hold of somebody that owed him ten dollars, as opposed to his million of dollars that he owed, and he started to throttle them. It's a very graphic picture here of him being violent with those people that owed him money. The scripture makes it very clear to us that in the end, this man who was forgiven much was condemned for his actions. He was turned over to the scripture says the torturers or the jailers until he could pay off his debt. In other words, his debt was reinstated. What had been forgiven was now reinstated to him. And he's going to have to he's going to have to work it off. What does that mean for us spiritually? It goes something like this. Jesus Christ came, suffered, died, and rose again. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Christ himself, the only begotten, came in order to forgive you and me. And so therefore, our response hopefully will be, we will therefore forgive others. But the scripture gives us a warning that says that some people don't necessarily act in this manner. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, that some people, there's sometimes us, am I right? We sometimes don't really um, forthcome with, uh, with forgiveness towards others. We get a little annoyed. And it's always true that oftentimes what we struggle with, we see in others, and we, we don't like it when we see it in somebody else. But we're okay with it in ourselves. The scripture says that he'll be turned over to the torturers. And I will simply say to you today that the reality is when we act out of unforgiveness, when we act out of a lack of grace, we are in, in a sense our own torturers because we are not experiencing the fullness that God has for us. We're caught up in judgments and condemnation. And so what is the scripture telling us? The scripture is saying, remember that God forgave you for everything. God forgave you for everything. Therefore, you have the capacity within you to forgive others for the small infractions that they bring against you. We use this phrase that says, he got slighted. Everybody know that phrase? He got slighted. And the idea is a slight is something very small that irritates us and can fester and grow unless we recognize that we have to remove that from our lives. We, we have to exercise, you know, the idea that we're not going to let something small become something large in our mind and, and bother us in relationship to others. So again, we need to remember, Christ forgave us everything. Christ forgave us everything. Is there one thing that the scripture tells us that he has not forgiven us? No. Scripture says to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. That's a whole other topic, but it doesn't apply here. You've been forgiven everything. So if you've been forgiven everything, ought we not also to forgive others? More importantly, aren't we already endued with the Holy Spirit whereby we have the capacity to forgive others? Now, I said when I go to Illinois next, next weekend, the fields are going to be full of, of plenty. There will be corn everywhere. You can't tell that I'm fixated on having some of this sweet corn. But you know what's interesting is those fields, if you look at them, they all look the same, but there's two kinds of corn that's been planted. One is called field corn. And field corn isn't so sweet. It's a little tough. And it's what they use to feed the animals. The pigs and the, the, and the, uh, the cows. This is central Illinois, so they don't have sheep. I mean, it's just pigs and cows everywhere. But then also growing alongside it is what we call sweet corn. And sweet corn looks pretty much the same on the outside, except for that when you open it up, you peel that husk back. Anybody else starting to salivate? You peel that husk back and you see this, it's either white or it's beautiful yellow. 
smells so good. And when you bite into it, it's sweet and it's juicy and it's luscious. I should stop. It's, here's the thing. This is what God has for us. Is to have the sweetness, the tastiness, the juiciness of this sweet corn in our lives, which is in my sermon today is to illustrate that we have a heart of forgiveness towards others, a heart of setting other people free, a heart that says, I've been forgiven much, so I should forgive you what little you've done against me. Unfortunately, oftentimes, in the context of Western civilization, we've been kind of taught that all that really matters is what you say you believe. But I'm here to say to you that the scripture today is clear. It's not just about what we believe. It's about what we do. It's about what we do. And the question is, will we forgive others in the way that we've been forgiven? And when we stop and think about how much Christ has forgiven us, I don't know about you, but when I reflect on my life, I think, oh my gosh, I'm beyond hope. And yet, he who knew no sin became righteousness, be be became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. And that's the gift that God has given to us. So out of this abundance of forgiveness, let us forgive one another and have peace with others. And when they slight us, let's be able to say, you know what, I'm not gonna focus on that. I'm gonna focus on loving them. I'm gonna focus on being able to give them grace as I've received grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.